I think we can celebrate God with a round of applause this morning. I know that your round of applause can be a little more enthusiastic as we celebrate God in the life of Louis J. A. and Parfait and Wapapé at 95. On behalf of the Louis himself, I want to welcome you all. We're going to start with opening prayer and our Lord's prayer. And give you great honor to welcome our officiating pastor and minister today, Pastor Itoa Igodala, from the Trinity House. We put our hands together with Pastor Itoa. Since we have space on our seats.
Um, we we'll have time for just about four tributes before we have the next theme. I think I'm just going to look for the person with the most inviting eyes. Okay, we have someone on the high team. Okay, I've been told to start from the high team. Let's put our hands together for a very wonderful time. And 
That's has happened to Nigeria over the years. We now have a standard out of date, which has been used in one German town in the south. I just forgot the name of the famous city. And that is what we had. Now, again, by it so happens that that architect which is designed was now the architect who built the world famous stadium for the Peking Olympics. See what we miss? Best yeah? And you see, they've gone on to do wonderful things. I think their designs now are very, very futuristic. In fact, the last time um, this thing I, I hear and I hear, they talk to them seriously about it. They now want to put some artificial moons in the sky to light up their cities at night. I hope technology should please know when to stop. I beg you engineers and you technologists. But the point is that really that uh, we've had a professional engineer, an accomplished businessman. The miracle he has performed, I don't know. But he's 95. But some of us, unlike his name, we are the Europa days. We carry sticks around. <laughs> My wife, yeah. you know, you know, he can have danced young men of that. He's kept slim, he's had enough money to eat, but he's disciplined himself. You see some. And the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Verse 20, very important. There shall no more then be an infant of days, not old, for the child shall die a hundred years old. As I was saying, that if a person should die at the age of hundred, they'll say, but this is for the child, because God had decreed longevity into the lives of his people. But the sin of them, and they shall find dry years and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant, it shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain. I thought somebody would say another amen. amen. For they are the seed, and it shall come to pass. Before they call, I will answer. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The book of Isaiah is reputed to be written by the prophet Isaiah, who lived about seven before Christ. It contains more prophecies about the Messiah that ends in it that it is called sometimes the fifth gospel or the Bible in miniature like the entire Bible it consists of 66 chapters representing the 66 books of the Bible few of them are like the Old Testament which give a graphic history of the Jews and their relationship with God. With God. The last time to read to them, welcome. I used to give it to him. Give me money, give me money, give me money. So one day, after a very, very difficult vigil, he came, demanding money, demanding money, demanding money, demanding money. And I got a little irritated that day. And I said, what is wrong with you? Demand, demand, demand that. You have never given me anything in your life. Give me something. I have to give you something. So he stopped, he bought a bottle of coke. He said, take it, I'll give you something. 
they live a long time. How come those they are not rich towards God? What is this prosperity for? What are these lands and houses for? What are these cars at the end of the day? There was a story of this man, very, very rich, very, very powerful. He had three sons, troublesome sons. He wasn't very pleased with his sons. And he had a lot of money. And then he came. So death came. And the sons started looking for the key. Looking for the key up and down. He said, well, this one has finally died. All this money, all this gold, all this riches, no one will take them anywhere. They were looking for the key, looking for the key, they couldn't find the key. So they got a knock. The key fell out of the mouth. I knew this one. They <laughs> took the key and opened the place and said, let's have a party. What do we do to live a meaningful life? Number one, you need to know God. 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 A life without God is godless and has no good in it. You know, a lot of us take God for granted. A lot of us know that God is that far, far thing that has no time. A lot of us know the God of your father, serve him with what a time. Why? They don't know the essence of their prosperity because they don't know the God of the prosperity. They don't know what to do with God has bestowed them with. Know the God, do not know God, nothing happens to God, but you that can only be found in the presence of God. And it doesn't take much to his rules. The rules of God are for your own benefit. When God says don't drink, God is not going to so that the difficulties and the challenges of adults will not happen. You need to be deliberate about life within the span of your time of life. What have you come to this life for? What did God bring you for? What are you supposed to achieve? Which direction are you supposed to go? And what are you going to live behind? What are you going to live behind? What are you going to leave behind for generations yet unborn? What is the world going to say about you? You know, at the time of people's death, people come and say all sorts of things, and they try to say the nicest things about you. Most of them are not being as truthful as they should be. But anyway, they say the nice things about you. So one lady one day lost her husband, and her husband was a very, very wicked man. Very, very wicked man. Very, very wicked. Everybody knew that he was wicked. So it was time for her to give her tribute and her eulogy. And this woman was extremely nice. I mean, she had to be very nice to cope with this man. So they were wondering what nice thing she was going to say about this wicked husband that she had just lost. So she stood up, picked up the microphone, and looked into the coffin and says, Mike, you had a wonderful set of teeth. And she said, Ladies and gentlemen, I close. Take advantage of opportunities that come your way. Nigeria is a country of lost opportunities, wasted potential. People who didn't know what to do when their hands found the opportunities. Self-centered people, self -se selfish people, cabal of gay people who don't care about anybody else but their own interest. Take advantage of opportunities and do good to your fellow man. Take advantage of opportunities and do good to your fellow man. She follow up and say, how have you lived until you are 95? Number one, I bear no grudges. I bear no grudges so that I can sleep well and wake well. I am open to all. I mind my business and I allow other people to get on with their own thing. I spread love and I do everything in love without expecting anything in return. And I do everything properly and I'm interested in the welfare of others. That is how to live a peaceable life and the secrets of longevity. Oh, I forgot. No alcohol. I don't need alcohol. He still does a few naughty things, but we can forgive him for those ones. I beat you. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. To him that knoweth good to do and does not do it, to him it is sin.
Love for one another. Love for country. Love for people. And love of God. Number five, and I close. Die empty. Die empty. Die empty. Die empty. Die empty. Give to this world all that is new to give and take nothing physical back with you. My mother-in-law had a very, very important say that changed my perspective. Two of them. Says number one, all houses are for sale. All houses are for sale. Says if you don't sell your house in your own time, your son will sell it. If your son doesn't sell it, his own son will sell it. If his son doesn't sell it, his own son's son will sell it. And when I go to Lagos, you know when I was younger, we drive to Lagos, big houses, people in quick drive, everywhere, houses. But you look at those houses today, it's full of rats and cockroaches. And they are for sale. If the children are not in court, they are for sale. All houses are for sale. The second thing she said to me was, Koto, 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 no ni. Koto, 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 Koto. It's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. It's all going into the Koto, Koto, no ni. Everything, Koto, Koto, money, Koto, bank, Koto, shoe, Koto, baby, Koto, houses, Koto, shoes, eh, baby, Koto, 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 no ni. Everything will go into the Koto. A friend of mine was traveling with me a few years ago. And he says, my father was a great man. My father was a great man. My father was a But my father made two mistakes. The first one, I won't repeat it. So, but the second one, he says, it was that house that he built. That house that he built. Why would anybody build such a humongous house? Now, with the children, we have to struggle to maintain the house, to put this, to put that. So we're just waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. We're going to turn it into a museum or into a hotel because the house has no value to us. Because all houses are indeed for sale. It's better to do well with what you have now so that it may be accounted to your name and not wasted by any child or any inheritor who did not help you to make it and have no understanding where you work so hard. We need to do foundations. We need to do. Uh, uh, we need to spend our money wisely. We need to invest in others and the next generation. We need to invest in Nigeria and make Nigeria great again. Everybody folds their hands. What are we going to do about Nigeria? Nobody wants to stick their neck out. We are hiding in our houses. Some people are having Plan B. Some people are selling other passports and other nationalities. Nigeria belongs to all of us. We have to stay here and fix it. We have to all get involved. No matter how old or how young you are, the oldest must do something back for the generation. The young people must rise up and do something about it. There's too much competence and intelligence in this nation for it to go where it is going. It is time to rescue my children and make meaning of our lives. Baba, happy birthday. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord direct your path. May He give you the capacity and the competence to still be one of the people that will rescue this nation. And may you have met your job. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we go now and spend a few minutes in private prayer and contemplation? A few minutes in private prayer and contemplation. I want you to go by your own life, your own situation, your own circumstances and uh, the meaning of life and the reason for existence. Why has God created you and brought you to this life? What did God want of you? And what have you done with the privilege of life? All heads are bowed and all eyes are closed. Please have your own private conversation with God. And it's just between you and Him and nobody else. There must be something, there must be a greater meaning, there must be a greater importance, there must be a greater reason 
There must be a greater direction that God is leading you through. There must be something that He wants you to leave behind. And that is He wants to even at this time. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. Life without Christ is a life of crisis. And life without God is going nowhere. So tonight, as you speak and you pray to God, I want to give all of us an opportunity to reconnect with that almighty King of Kings. That Lord of Lords, that mighty one of Israel. Just talk to God in your heart. To do for you that which you cannot do for yourself. And if you are here this afternoon, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, either for the first time, or you want to connect or reconnect with God. And you want a closer relationship with God and you want God to direct your life. And you want God to lead you and to strengthen you. And you are asking that I please share a word of prayer with you. I'll be extremely, extremely delighted to do so. So if you are asking for prayer this afternoon, all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. It's a private moment. So if there's an issue, a problem, a circumstance in your life that only God can do something about. My a child that is wayward. Might be financial issues that you are not dealt with. It might be circumstances of your birth that you need to check. It might be a wife or a spouse or a husband that has help or need of it. It might be a grandchild that is giving you concern. It might be your relative that has done as, not done as well as you could. It might be your health, your own personal health. And you are asking for a touch from God. I am sure that the God of mercy, the God of grace, is available to touch us all. That's why Psalm 16 says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. If you are asking for prayer this afternoon, please put your right hand on your own heart, wherever you may be, and I will pray with you. It means you want a closer relationship with God or you want to give your life to Jesus Christ for the first time. If you want understanding in life, I'll be happy to pray with you. Touch your right heart with your right hand, and I will pray with you very, very quickly. Thank you. Touch your heart with your right hand, and I will pray with you very quickly. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do this afternoon. Thank you very much. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. I'm going to pray right now. Just say this prayer after me. Father in heaven, I really sincerely thank you. I bless you and I glorify your name. I ask, Lord, that you forgive me of all my sins. And I ask, Lord, that you make a way for me. Today, I decree that I am born again and I will serve you. And I want the Spirit of the Almighty to come into my spirit and strengthen me even for the journey ahead. I promise, Lord, to serve you who heal this increase and call. Even our God who bless us. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much. I think we can celebrate Pastor Ito and Yoda one more time. Thank you so much, sir. Slash afternoon to you. We're still celebrating God. We're still in the mode of thanksgiving and praise for the life of our very written new believers. So can we do that one more time with a round of applause? Thank you. Very shortly we're going to hear from our celebrant himself. But before we do that, we have two songs. Our choir, the Green Man Classics Choral Group, will do a special number titled Akbata, and then after that we'll do a hymn before we hear from our seminar. So if you will, if you're not tired of clapping, please let's welcome the Greenland Classics Choral for a song led by Nemo. <laughs> Oh, so 
the moment. That was a song specially requested by our celebrant. All right, we're not going to do another hymn just before we hear from the celebrant. The choral group will give us the title of this hymn. So we have the title. I hope that's the one you have prepared. Very good. <laughs>
Gemeinde zu Es gibt auch noch Applaus von Well, the old saying is, I don't know where to start, but I know where to start. First of all, I must thank God Almighty for bringing each and every one here today. And I thank, I said, every one of you without exception is a friend, a brother, a sister, a lover, name it anything. I am prepared for it. In many ways, whatever success I have achieved, most of you have directly or indirectly been there for me. I will choose a few, whether they like it or not, I'll mention their names. Chief Philip Asiodo, I did not know him. I saw him preaching briefly when I was still a student. Uh, and something happened. I came back. I had some contracts from government of Nigeria. And I needed to supply generation, generators, which was banned and is still banned, but people import it into the country. I went to a senior colleague, late Lady Thomas, an engineer, and told him, I said, Uncle, you are in the Ministry of uh, Mines and Powers. I have been asked to import generators for the military. But there is a standing instruction that uh, the entrance or the importation of generators would not be permitted. Oh, he said, that's a small thing. Let's go to my boss. This chap who calls chief his boss is as tall and chief is there. So we went into his office. He was a forgotten. And I stood down there. And I said, what is it this? The appendage signature. Chief, I said, may God continue to bless you and your household. <laughs> uh, some of them are here. I will not mention their names. Uh, and they know themselves. Uh, I just say a few things about them. I like and I enjoy being around troublesome friends. I enjoy it. And I enjoy walking behind the scenes. And I enjoy it. Uh, well, they're very scared. I'm not going to mention their names. But they know well what they have done. When they talk of people thinking of the benefits and glory and future of this country, there are some young men, there are some young women who in their little way have contributed, but they don't say a word. Uh, well, how does one control himself? But I am on the old school, learn to say thank you. It's a magic word. Learn to say thank you. Can you hear and then please stand up? It's an order. Uh, there's another person hiding somewhere. He's supposed to sit on this high table. Soldier! He sits up there. Soldier! Alani? But I have seen that praise and glory today. That we all live in comfort, we make up of our best. We should thank God. There are people who are sacrificing their life and time for the good of all of us. I like to ask, especially make a special request. All of us, all in Judah, should please stand up for recognition. All Judah children. Male and female, please stand up for your mission. There is someone who is hiding somewhere. Should I mention your name? Please stand up to be recognized. Alero, I know you are a July girl. Well, distinguished guests, these are my senior brothers.
the only twin brother I have here is uh, Tommy. Yes. He's bald-headed. <laughs> but we are both born on the same day, not as the year. That the first of July. And then you are the first of July. And please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are my senior brothers and senior sisters. But he is my brother. So when I told someone, he said now today, uh, Ambassador Viola Oshu, when I was celebrating my 17th birthday, uh, he said, tell me, where is your father? I said, you like, even you are older than myself. I said, yes, he's an August. But he did not ask what year. So at my birthday, he was there. He said, Femi, you are cheeky. It's not a white dog. You say you are equal. I said, I never told you that. You asked for my birthday. I said, yes, July. And you told me yours was August. So, uh, here's July. Uh, yes, it's a question you can answer by him. So, uh, I always call them my senior brothers and senior sisters because uh, they were came into this great world before I did. So, those of you, uh, someone sent a nice picture to me this morning. There was an old lady, 100 plus, dancing. Uh, that gives the message, asking me not to disappoint them. I will not. And then uh, there was another picture someone sent to me that July men and women are very kind hearted, loving. I don't know whether they are kind hearted. I don't know whether they are loving. But this was the message I got this morning from someone whose name should remain anonymous. Uh, one of those cheeky young friends of mine. And I have so many of them. But uh, we are all here this afternoon. By the grace of God and the grace of some young friends of mine male, this time, not female, who felt that, uh, well, we don't know how long this man is going to be with us, but whatever we can do, while it's around, let us celebrate him. So, we are gathered here as a pleasure of my young friends, members of the Metropolitan Club, uh, some of them have sent me off from the table that I chaired for many years. And it used to be called the ambassador's table. Uh, people like Karen and others sat with me there. In fact, uh, one of our old members, uh, Sir Graham Burton, who used to sit on that table, passed on two weeks ago. So then uh, the present president asked me to try and nudge some Nigerians, members of the club, to be in it and so on. But he has forgotten where I used to sit. He said, I chief from your table. I said, yes, I sit on table one. He said, no. I said, you have to right. He said, your table. Go there. I said, which table? He said, that table. I said, I have to write. I gave you some money from them. I got 18 million naira. We were looking for 500 million. I got 18 million naira from about four of them. And then a sister table that has been trying to annex my table for years. I got about four of them donating about five million. So we were able to contribute immensely to a 50 million naira project. So a few weeks ago, some members accused me for not coming to the club. And they said, Chief, they said you are coming to the club next year. I said, yes. And then once in January, I said, yes, I'm going to the club in January. But I did not see what year. So they were expecting me, I did not see what year. So, unfortunately, the president is not here today. But then I thought I would have my way three weeks ago when I came to the club for lunch. And I quietly walked in with Chief Asiot. And I had already asked the steward to prepare a table for just me and my sins and my God. So they prepared a table for me.
When we got there, the chief and senior said, No, chief, you are not sitting here. So I told him why I want to sit here. Because on my table, they say I've gone to the waiting room. That's the thing. Table one. And those are those who are above 80. But uh, the morning does not decide the day. Uh, some of you, the Bible says 120. Genesis says it, Deuteronomy says it. The New Testament says 70. But the Old Testament is my watchword. So anybody who wants to stay much longer, please think of the Old Testament 120. There's still room for us. My mother lived for 102 years. She died 35 years ago. Why should I die after? I'm going to live long. You don't live long. But I must say that you have all made my Those who are stubborn, who call me names, I look at them. Uh, but their wives are my sisters, my daughters, my confidant. My name is anything. I have so many of them as friends, boys and girls from this particular club and outside of this club. And I have the royal family here. They must start to be recognized whether they like it or not. This is my privilege uh, as former president of this club. Would the Ademola clan please stand up for recognition? All the siblings who came out from the Ademola stock, please stand up to be recognized. Male and female, every one of them. And great grandchildren and children. Well, uh, I tell you, please sit down. Uh, the late Sergeant of Madimola was one of those benefactors I had. I was a federal government scholar. I decided I would not want to work in Nigeria. So he came to London to my late friend in the Winnipeg. And when we were talking, Kam Salem was there. He said, uh, you are the young man we are looking for. So the people said, why? He was my childhood friend. He was rascally. He said to the wife that uh, he's a wonder scholar and doesn't want to work in Nigeria. So Sadiq Jumbo came to my rest. He said, well, tell me. He said, sir, he said, do you want to work in Nigeria? I said, I want to work in Nigeria, but not for the government. He said, why? I said, at a function we organized in a town hall in London. One of the ministers looked at me. Then I had the, what they call Fidel Pasco there. Incidentally, Fidel Pasco and I were born the same year, the same month with Queen Elizabeth. So you know where I stand. But Italy and uh, this right here is where I stand. So, he looked at me. Sadiq Ubo said, Femi, I said, sir, you must go and work for the government. I said, yes, I will. But I was called a communist because I had a black beard all over my face. Uh, but unfortunately for us, or unfortunately for most of us at the time, those who were involved in asking for what is the right independence for Nigeria, we are children of people of the royal family, like late Justice Nepo Ademola, the copper of Ife, his son was also one of the so-called communists. Uncle Ade Thomas was one of such. Odebeye was some, these were young men, who came in from homes where, if they said working class should talk all people, don't belong to. But they were fighting for one country, one world, Nigeria. And that's what you have today. I'm sorry. But, uh, Pastor, you said something about Nigeria. I'm sorry I'm going to be political for a short while. You have to bear with me. Today I'm feeding you to my friends. So you have enough to eat. We want Nigeria. Most of us came back to this country with high hopes. I know some Nigerians who destroyed their passports when they came back home, their British passports. Some of them are regretting it today. Why? 
because it's better out there than here. That's not correct. If you go to a graduation in Europe, in UK today, you'll be proud to be in Nigeria. You'll hear Miss Dede Dede Dede. She comes out with her gown like that in Nigeria. First class. The other first class. There was a case. I think one of the parents was here. It's Mrs. Coyne Day here. Mrs. Coyne Day. Younger sister, aha, she's here, I see her. I think your daughter will be the first class with another person of hers from the same university. Now, in the 40s and 50s, I trust they were made first class. But you now make them, you find the little girls and boys who make them. They want to come back to Nigeria. But how can a first class boy or girl work on a third class person? Let's be honest with ourselves. Don't give me any reason. There's no reason for it. Okay? The reason you may have is to discourage the other person to not to come back to Nigeria. But I am persuading parents. Encourage them to come back. Not now. Just wait for a short while. Things will be okay. I know most of you are shouting, no, no, no. I have them back there. They don't want to come back. But I'm sure they will come back. Because, you see, Rome was not built in a day. No, we'll talk about it. The only thing we have to tell our children is they must be honest with themselves. They must be patient. They must be told our son was saying, go to, go to, go to. Even those days they used to say six foot. There's no six foot there anymore. There's no six foot there anymore. They just dumb the character. Why do they even have to ask for six foot? It's just kind of smoking to keep around. But Nigeria is a blessed country. We bless people. You are a very good bride. In Britain last week and in Lagos last week, the High Commissioner said she wanted Nigerians to come and study in Britain. Five years ago, they were not too keen. But when they hear, and see what Nigerians are doing in the United States of America. They are eager to have them back. So let's employ, that is what we have to offer. Let's offer that. But then we we'll come back, like the engineers say, go back to the drawing board, back to our home here, and do what we can do to encourage the elites we have governing us. I'm sorry to say so, but it's a statement of fact that we have to encourage them, bring them back, and tell them that. There is a place that we can all be comfortable. There is enough to go around Nigeria. And I grew up in Port Harcourt. It was called the Garden City. The streets were good. School children were planting flowers around their schools. The traveling teacher told us were expatriates. We are all taught the names of flowers, Bergenvalia, Rose, this, 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 all these flowers made Port Harcourt a place. And we call it Port High Life. Then the caravan says, C A L A B A R, come and be and rest. But some of the smart ones say, come and love and be at rest. So when parents go to work in Calabar, their relatives are worried. That when your son goes to Calabar, <coughs> Mama Calabar will snatch her from you. So, uh, particularly those who are in customs, produce, who are posted to those places. Uh, their family, the female family, were always worried. But when you have a good thing, please appreciate it. Calabar was a very good city. I think it was at one time the seat of government. Like Akasa in the uh, Bayelsa state was one time the seat of the produce people, Niger Delta. What has become of Akasa today? But in that place, Akasa, they have what I would take to you and make millions tomorrow. 
It's a secret. Don't do what I tell you what it is. I tell you. Caviar. Caviar drives the Bayelsa state. Nobody knows. If I take it, I send it to Germany, send it to America, send it to Britain, and make a fortune out of it. You don't have to go outside Nigeria to be a millionaire. Go to Bayelsa state. There's plenty of Obono there, plenty of Egusi uh, uh, there. So many things drive there. Nobody thinks about it. We all want to come here to Lagos. We all want to meet as the drivers. Please, for God's sake. Uh, this is my opportunity. I don't know when the last time I speak to you, but whether it is or not, let me tell you how I feel. And I want all of you to please feel the way I feel. It's not because it suits me, but I grew up to have enjoyed what it is to be in Nigeria at my age. Our parents were ordering our suits from England those days. We go to the customs or the apple to go and collect the box of suit. It's little children, a small straw hat. And then on Christmas Day, we are best dressed. Today, you can make watch our parents used to order. To have a car, after the Second World War, there was a quota system in adopting cars to people. But that one had only seven, I remember this vividly. Only seven cars allowed to be imported into Otago in 1945. It was the prerogative of the wealthy people to have it. Today, uh, in the streets of Lagos, uh, cars are being sold. But should we continue to rely on them when we can produce most of these things here on ground? There are lots of young, like that male and female, whom we should make good use of. Lots and lots and lots of them hanging around. In your own household, I'm sure you have a family.